Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the pre-tracheal and the pre-vertebral fascia of the deep cervical fascia of neck. Now first of all the pre-tracheal fascia. This is the pre-tracheal fascia. This mainly encloses the thyroid gland and suspends the thyroid gland and also forms the false capsule of the thyroid gland. Remember it forms the false capsule of the thyroid gland. Now the attachments of the pre-tracheal fascia are first of superiorly as you can see over here. Uh, it will attach it superiorly to three main things that is the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage superiorly. These three things, hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. Well, well inferiorly uh, this uh, pretracheal fascia below the thyroid gland encloses the inferior thyroid vein. Okay, so remember superiorly it is only attached to these three things while inferiorly below the thyroid gland this pretracheal fascia actually encloses the inferior thyroid veins then it passes behind the brachiocephalic vein and finally blends with the arch of aorta and fibrous pericardium. Now on the either side, on the either side as you can see uh, this pretracheal fascia actually forms the uh, front of the carotid sheath. This is the carotid sheath which actually encloses three main things that is the internal jugular vein, common carotid artery and the vagus. Now we will discuss about this in our next video. Just over here remember that this pretracheal fascia actually forms the front of the carotid sheet and fuses with the fascia deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay now the other features of the thyroid gland. First of all suspensive ligament of Berry. Just look at the diagram. This is the thyroid gland. Now I told you before the thyroid gland actually enclosed by thyroid capsule. Right, so the posterior layer of the thyroid capsule is comparatively thick. Okay, and on the either side of this gland, uh, the, the capsule of it is actually thickened more. Okay, and forms the suspensory ligament of berry or the posterior suspensory ligament of berry. Okay, now this ligament is mainly attached chiefly as you can see to the cricoid cartilage. Remember this uh, suspensory ligament of berry is on the either side of the thyroid gland. Okay, and the thickened part of the capsule also. So it is mainly attached to the cricoid cartilage over here, but it also extends to the thyroid cartilage as well. Now, one more important thing about the pretracheal fascia is that it provides a slippery surface for the free movement of the trachea during the swelling. As you can see in this diagram, this this pretracheal fascia actually covers the trachea and the esophagus also. So because of the uh, slippery nature of this pretracheal fascia. It provides a slippery surface for the free movement of the trachea during swallowing. Okay, so two main important features, uh, ligament of berry and the slippery surface for easy movement of the trachea during the swallowing purpose. Now the clinical aspect of the pretracheal fascia. Now any kind of neck infection that occurs in front of the pretracheal fascia, just look at this diagram over here. Suppose any kind of infection occurs in front of this pretracheal fascia, so the bulging out will be occur in the supra sternal area or extend down in the anterior mediastinum remember whatever if any kind of infection occurred in the front of this pretracheal fascia so the bulging out because of the infection will cause in the will occur in the supra sternal area or the anterior mediastinum now next thing is that when you deglutinate anything okay so what happens if you are having a third gland swelling so this third gland swelling and the third gland itself okay will actually uh, move along with the deglutination. Why? Because the thyroid gland is actually attached to the uh, cartilage of the larynx uh, with the help of ligament of berry. So as because of this attachment by the ligament of berry between the thyroid gland and the cartilage of the uh, larynx, there is, move, there is movement of the thyroid gland and its swelling while deglutination. Now the pre-vertebral fascia. Now this is the pre-vertebral fascia. Now this pre-vertebral fascia actually uh, forms the front of the pre-vertebral muscles. Pre-vertebral muscles are sclerus anterior, sclerus medius and the sclerus posterior. Right. And it forms the front of these pre-vertebral muscles and also forms the floor of the posterior triangle of neck. Now the attachments and the relations of the pre-vertebral fascia. Now first of all superiorly it is mainly attached to the base of the skull. Over here you can see this is the pre-vertebral fascia. So it is attached to the base of the skull. Right. And inferiorly over here, it extends up to the superior mediastinum where it actually divides into its two main layers that is the anterior layer and the posterior layer. This anterior layer actually known as the LR fascia. Okay, and this LR 
फेस शो द एंटीरियर लेयर एक्चुअली ब्लेंड्स विद द बक्को फेरेंजल फेस शो एंड द पोस्टीरियर लेयर एक्चुअली अटैच टू द एंटीरियर लॉन्गिट्यूडनल लिगामेंट एंड टू द बॉडी ऑफ द फोर्थ थोरेसिक वर्टिवल सो रिमेंबर दिस प्री वर्टिवल फेस शो एक्चुअली सुपीरियरली अटैच टू द बेस ऑफ द स्कल Uh, in the inferior lid actually goes up to superior mediastinum where actually splits into two layers anterior or the alar layer and the posterior layer anterior layer actually attached the buccopharyngeal fascia where the posterior layer actually attached to the anterior longitudinal ligament and the the fourth thoracic vertebra right now anteriorly it is actually separated from the pharynx and the uh, buccopharyngeal fascia by the retropharyngeal space this is the retropharyngeal space okay so the pre vertebral fascia anteriorly anteriorly as you can see over here this is this is the sagittal section and this is the uh, cross section of this of the neck right so over here this is the pre vertebral fascia over here this blue is the pre vertebral fascia now this actually splits into anterior and the posterior and anterior one is known as the alar fascia alar fascia actually uh, actually attach with the buccopharyngeal fascia or in relation with that right now uh, this Pre vertebral fascia anteriorly actually separates from the pharynx and the buccopharyngeal fascia by the retropharyngeal space. This is the retropharyngeal space over here and over here is this retropharyngeal space. And in the lower part of the neck, pre vertebral fascia and the buccopharyngeal fascia, these two fascias fuse together. Means in the upper side they are uh, separated, in the lower part they are fused with each other. And the lymph node are mainly present in the retropharyngeal space only. Okay. Now on the lateral side, the the pre vertebral fascia lies deep to the trapezius muscle and is attached to the fascia of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now some of the feature of the pre vertebral fascia, now cervical and the brachial plexus, cervical uh, and the brachial plexus, these two actually lie lies behind the pre vertebral fascia, and this pre vertebral fascia is also pierced by remember four cutaneous branches of cervical plexus. so these both plexus lies behind the fascia and the four cutaneous branches of this cervical plexus actually pierces the prevertebral fascia now one more important term axillary sheet now uh, the brachial plexus the trunk of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery actually passes laterally between the two prevertebral muscle that is the sclerus anterior and the sclerus medius okay and they carry with them a covering between these two muscles and that is known as the axillary sheet Now this axillary sheet is actually formed by the prevertebral fascia only. Okay. Now the fascia, prevertebral fascia also provides a fixed base for the movement of the pharynx, esophagus, and the carotid sheet. Now, last the clinical aspect of the prevertebral fascia. Now over here the neck infection can occur, right? Now it may occur behind the prevertebral fascia or in front of the prevertebral fascia. Now the behind infection of the prevertebral fascia occurs due to the tuber clauses of the cervical vertebra. and the front of the prevertebral fascia infection occurs in the retropharyngeal space mainly due to suppuration so suppuration is actually the coming out pus is a suppuration okay so this was all about the pre trachea and the prevertebral fascia hope you heard well thank you so much